Shalom, Yasharala. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, to the 144,000 elect, and to the one third of all men, women, and children of the nation of Yasharala that are coming back to these law, statutes, and commandments in these last days. So today, we're going to give a quick lesson and quick rebuke on the Christmas spirit. Because as you can see, today is the day that everyone um, gathers and gets presents and, you know, drink eggnog and play music and be merry, um, all in the name of Christmas. And some of them will gather in the name of the Lord on Christmas, which is not only hypocrisy, but it is a huge sin against the Lord. So we're going to go into these scriptures so we can understand why you should not be partaking in Christmas. All right. What does it mean to partake in Christmas? Like I said before, uh, you and your family um, are getting together. Y'all are cooking a nice feast. You're inviting people over or people are inviting you over. You're opening gifts. You're playing music. You're being around people who are playing the music. Um, so even if you may not, you, you might be aware that Christmas is, uh, is a pagan holiday, but it is your responsibility to completely separate from the spirit of Christmas. And how you do that is you have to separate from all activity. So even if, uh, you have friends that are doing it, it could be your wife, it could be, uh, your close relatives, you have to separate from them. And not and not bear their sins because um, because the Lord is going to destroy people for celebrating Christmas. I'm just saying it plainly. So let's just say you're somebody's picking you up, right? And they're telling you, "Hey, we got. I'm a. I'm gonna stop to the store. I'm gonna stop to the bank real quick, right?" They take you to the bank, and then they go inside the bank and they rob the bank, and they come back outside with all the money and they say, "All right, let's go." Now, you, it wasn't your intentions to rob that bank. You just wanted to go for the ride. And your friend did not tell you that they were going to rob that bank. Well, guess what happens when the police find you? Both of you are going to be charged. You're going to be charged. Uh, uh, your, your friend's going to be charged for the crime. And you are going to be charged for being an accessory to the crime. So by partaking in Christmas, in any way, form, or fashion, you are are an accessory to the the sin of celebrating and and worshiping a false god all right so so let's get into it so the first scripture that i want to get is um is deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 36 the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known and there shalt thou serve other gods wood and stone so these are one of the curses that you Negroes Hispanics and Native Americans are suffering right now because you're not serving the Lord's feast days you're serving other gods feast days okay Christmas is was founded by a man the lord did not decree christmas the lord did not um set up christmas to be a holy day who set up christmas to be a holy day there was a man named nimrod all right nimrod was a hamite okay he was the son of cush who i believe was the oldest might have been the oldest son of ham all right, so he would be a so-called African, um, according to the Bible. And Nimrod was solely responsible for creating the apostasy, which means um, the turning away from, from God. Okay, so when you create a, an apostasy, you basically take people who are going in one direction and following the Lord, and you redirect their attention to something else that's not of the lord all right so nimrod is 
the progenitor basically of the apostasy from God. So how did he do that? All right. So I'm going to go to this, uh, this article here, which is titled Nimrod, the Lord of Christmas. Nimrod started the great and organized worldly apostasy from God that has dominated the world, this world until now. Nimrod married his own mother, that's a sin, whose name was Semiramis. After Nimrod's death, his so-called mother, wife, Semiramis, propagated the evil doctrine of the survival of Nimrod as a spirit being. She claimed a full-grown evergreen tree sprang overnight from a, from a dead tree stump, which symbolized the springing forth unto new life of the death of Nimrod on each anniversary of his birth. Now, not only did Nimrod spawn Christmas, but he also spawned anniversaries of birth. All right, though this is, this is what you would call a birthday. People were not celebrating birthdays before Nimrod. All right, but Nimrod made, during in his rulership, he made people honor his birthday. She claimed Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts upon it. December 25th was the day, was the birthday of Nimrod. This is the real origin of the Christmas tree. It doesn't matter why you are doing it today to God. What matters is how this nonsense all started because that this is exactly what led people away from God in the first place. So because you think, oh, well, we know, we know that Christmas, you know, Christ wasn't born on Christmas. We know that Nimrod started at Christmas. Well, you're not supposed to be celebrating it. Oh, it's just for the kids. You know, it's, it's just for the family. This is the only time of the year that we can get together. Well, you're not supposed to be doing it. Because God hates it. Let's get to the scriptures. This is the book of Amos chapter 5 and verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. See that? The Lord hates your feast days. Why? Because they have nothing to do with the Lord. You all want to get together on Christmas, right? In, in the name of the Lord. Y'all want to get together uh during thanksgiving you want to get together during the fourth of july you want to get together on new years you want to get together on all these days that have nothing to do with the lord but when it comes to the lord's feast days passover feast of unleavened bread first fruits pentecost right feast of trumpets feast of atonement feast of tabernacles hanukkah silence we don't hear nothing from y'all and that's the issue. That's the issue because you all are chosen. And, and I'm, 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 I'm only talking to people who are just learning this truth. All right. People want to come together on all these feast days. Right. But they don't want to come together on the Lord's feast days. And that that is why his anger will be kindled against you if you partake in any form or fashion in Christmas. Right. So. If you look into Nimrod's story, it was it was actually it this uh, this article kind of summarizes it up nice. But people were actually being forced to leave uh, gifts under the Christmas tree and to honor Nimrod. And if they did not do it, guess what would happen? Semiramis had the the people anyone who would not uh, honor uh, Nimrod by leaving gifts under the tree, they would have them beheaded and they would hang their heads on an evergreen tree. All right. That is where you get the ornaments. So when you see all these ornaments on the Christmas tree, these round balls, they also symbolize the heads of the people who did not want to go with it, with the program of honoring Semiramis who was claiming um, to give birth to a God, right? The whole um, Trinity, uh, Father, Father, Son, and, and, and Holy Spirit, 
or I'm sorry, but uh, mother God, father God, and son God spirit. And uh, so th th this is where the idea of hanging ornaments off of the Christmas tree spawned from is because that's what they were make that that's what they were doing to people, right? So people were forced to celebrate his birthday. Now birthdays is a separate sin because that goes into idolatry. That that's that deals with you not following God and now following yourself and honoring yourself and celebrating yourself and not God. So not only so this was a two in one. This is a two in one. He got people celebrating Christmas and he got people celebrating birthdays in one foul swoop. All right. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10. All right. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse one. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. All right, because who are the heathen? The heathen are is everyone who did, who is unaware, who was not given the laws of God. Okay, because all these different uh, all these different religions, all these different people that were walking walking the earth during that time, they seen the Lord before. They seen the angels in the sky. They knew what was going on. But they didn't understand that the Lord was dealing with a particular people. So what they were doing was they were creating their own vain customs based on what they were seeing. But it wasn't what the Lord wanted man to do. The Lord's instructions came down through a specific bloodline. And those people, the Israelites, were, were assigned the responsibility of teaching the nations how to follow God's laws. All right. So. But the problem was they wouldn't do it themselves. So in Jeremiah, the Lord is saying, learn not the way of the heathen, because the heathen is is doing doing things according to their own hearts. Verse two, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. All right. So that when the heathen sees a sign uh, in the stars like an eclipse and they see all these all these things they don't even know that the Lord is giving us a sign that has to do with their destruction or that has to do with prophecy they see an eclipse as a spectacle like oh yes we're gonna get our special glasses we're gonna you know sit out on, on a on a lawn chair and we're just gonna stare at the eclipse because that's what people do but he's telling us we shouldn't be dismayed the way they are because everything that they do is vain and here's an example of what they do verse 3 for the customs of the people are vain for one cutteth a tree out of the forest the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe so they go out in the forest and they cut down a tree hmm Verse four, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fastened it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. What does that sound like? A Christmas tree. Deck the halls with my mouth. Exactly. So, verse five, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil neither also is it in them to do good so don't be tempted by people around you that are celebrating it because they they're not going to do they can't do anything to you because they're not of the lord okay it's not in them to do good because all the ways all the ways that they know are evil right so the lord is warning us not to follow what these people are doing because here's another thing the people the customs of the people that you follow determine who rules over who so if you go and you follow the ways of islam in in the middle east guess who's going to rule over you the muslims will rule over you You'll pay their taxes. You, you, you'll live life their way and they will rule over you. If you go over to Asia, 
where they're following Buddha and you follow the ways of Buddha, well, guess who will rule over you? They will. Moab and the, the Ammonites, they will rule over you, right? If you go into the land of Ham, right, and, and, and follow the Hamites traditions, they will rule over you. That is what happens spiritually when you when you follow other people's traditions instead of your own. That is what that that is that is like a direct relationship, right? So in America, what we follow the ways of the Greeks. We fought we follow the ways of these other nations by 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 celebrating these holidays. And guess who rules over us? So the Lord was trying to prevent this from happening. Okay, and the way you prevent it from happening is you do not give energy to the nation that is ruling over you by participating in their feast days. Because what do you do? Christmas is December 25th. The entire month, what do you, what do, you do? You're spending money. You're going to the store, you're buying gifts, you're buying gift wrap, you're buying food, you're getting fat, you're being gluttonous. And where does all that money go? It travels upwards to these corporations and companies that make the products that you that you buy for your family. So you, you are an accessory because you are giving energy to the very thing that is oppressing you. So this is a prime example of what's happening through the spirit. So it doesn't matter how it feels. It doesn't matter if, oh, you know, it's just for, you know, the sake, you know, the greater good. It's not for the greater good. Do you want to be oppressed or not? So you have to understand the spirit behind what you are doing. So when you're, when you're fin finally awake, it can actually be difficult the first time to endure a Christmas that everybody is a part of and you are not first of all you should be happy you should thank the lord you should give all praises to yahweh bashim yahweh shai that he pulled you from all the madness because remember at some point back in the day christmas was about christ right first it was about santa claus and then you know obviously that's a that's that's an idol and a false god because he's not even real right so it's predicated on a lie that your parents tell you when you're young you find out that santa claus isn't even real right a false god and then it's like oh well it's about christ christ was born on christmas and then you find out christ was not born on christmas christ was born in the spring so now all of a sudden well there's no backing because there's no santa claus and there's no christ being born so what the hell are we celebrating for? Nobody understands what they're celebrating for. Oh, this is just tradition. This is just what we do. Well, well, that's dumb. You don't do things just to do it. There's no, there's that. That's why the Lord calls it vain. Who does things just to do it? That that is that is a that is that is an expression of a lack of intelligence. When you do things in vain. There is no, nothing spiritual about it. If it doesn't serve your spirit, why would you do it? We're all here on this spiritual playground trying to, trying to grow in the spirit. Yet we do things that are contrary to our spirit or that, or that don't serve our spirit. So this Bible, this truth, this is like food for your spirit. And the only way you can, can digest that food is by doing what the Lord says to do and, and separating from all the things that Lord that the Lord does not want you to do. So in 2020, the spirit of Christmas is completely vain because all it entails is buying money. I mean, not buying money, buying gifts, getting a tree and opening gifts and eating food. That's really what, what it's all about. I don't know what people do in their houses now. I don't know what stories that they're telling. It's not even about that anymore. But I'll tell you one thing. If you want to see spirits, if you, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to prove for sure that there are spirits involved 
in I'm talking about evil spirits that are involved with this feast day, try not buying a gift. Whether it's for your family, your girlfriend, your wife, boyfriend, whatever the case may be, don't buy that gift on Christmas and see what kind of spirits jump on that person. Tell them the Lord says we should not celebrate Christmas, so I'm not getting you a gift. And see, and then you'll see spirits. All right, so that's all I wanted to get into for this video. If one person was edified, the job has been done. Until the next video, Shalom.